Marcelo Clare has been at the helm of Sprint for a year now. It has been a great time to be a wireless customer in the U.S. It has been a more difficult time to be a wireless CEO. The FCC calls what's happening in the wireless market competition. Equity analysts call it a price war. Clare joins us now from Kansas City. Mr. Clare, congratulations first on your year. Uh, you announced today that you're done with contracts. How long until the entire American market is a contract-free zone? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And uh, yes, it's been a year. It's been a fascinating year, a year of many improvements. But let's tackle the contract issue. I think the American consumer is the great beneficiary from this. Pretty much, an American consumer will know what they're paying for a phone and what they're paying for service. And in an industry that's been so confusing, bringing mm -hmm. transparency to consumers is a must. So yeah. I think the big winners in this movement is American consumers. Now, yeah. us at a Sprint, we've decided to get away with contracts, but more importantly, we've decided to completely change the way consumers get a mobile phone. And what we're doing is we, we've done a lot of research, and what customers are telling us is we want the latest device always at the lowest available price. So yesterday we launched iPhone Forever, right. which is our first iteration of this new program, right. which for $22 a month, you have the ability okay. to every single time there's a new iPhone, you basically drop off your you drop off your old iPhone at any Sprint store yes. and pick up a new one. Yeah, it's a leasing scheme. In less than so, uh, Mr. Clory, if you wouldn't mind me asking, SoftBank boosting its Sprint stake again today, seventy-three million dollars more worth of shares, over eighty percent now. And you came in with the SoftBank investment. What is your and SoftBank and Sprint's plan for your spectrum? Well, the spectrum is we're going to utilize 100% of our spectrum. In our last earnings call, we basically laid out a network plan that involved a massive densification of our network. And basically, we're going to once and for all be able to use the entire spectrum, which I think will give a sprint a competitive advantage in the next two years. We've been very public. We're in the midst of continuing the build out of our network, and we've said that in the next two years, Sprint is going to be number one or number two in every single market from a network quality perspective. Uh, Mr. Clary, you talk about the advantage of transparency for the consumer. One thing that transparency does is bring down ARPU, average revenue per user. Uh, T-Mobile is down there at $48 a month. You're at 55 How much farther down that rabbit hole can you follow them? We haven't. I mean, the, the way you get a measure is not average revenue per user. It's what is called AFPU, average billing per user. You have to take into consideration how much a customer is paying you for the phone and how much a customer is paying you for service. And if mm -hmm. you add them both together, you will realize that right. I've been the CEO of Sprint for one year and our AFPU have actually increased from a handset customer perspective. So we're not lowering the price. Prices are not being lowered. What is happening is there's so transparency to the customer. Because can you compete with T-Mobile with your ARPU at 55? Because your churn is much higher right now. Your churn is at 1.6. Theirs is at 1.3. Well, if you look at the churn trajectory, we were at 2.3, and now we're at 1.56. 1.56 makes it the lowest churn in Sprint's 19-year-old history in the mobile business. So what is happening is customers are loving our programs, they're staying, and we've had probably one of the drop, highest drops in churn in the history of telecom in the U.S. in such a short period of time. So we feel very good on how we're competing. And the way we're going to compete is by launching different services like iPhone Forever. Again, All right, but in the, the larger stability. scheme of things, Mr. Clore, is there some kind of deal in the works? Why would SoftBank increase yet again today its stake? Above 80% now, though it has said it will stay below 85 well, you know, that's, that, that's Massa's prerogative, but I think he's been very clear that he believes that a Sprint stock is highly undervalued, so he's going, to make, he's going to continue to invest in Sprint as he's done, and he's going to continue to provide us the support that he's been providing. And like we said jointly with Massa, is, you know, we are on the verge of a massive Sprint turnaround, and we feel very good of our prospects, we feel very good about the future, and that's why I believe SoftBank continues to invest in Sprint. Uh, Marcelo Clare, CEO, uh, celebrating his year anniversary at the helm of Sprint. Thank you very much for joining us from uh, Kansas.